Hello, my name is Mark Eckhart, owner of Long Haul Folding Kayaks. And what you're looking at here is the Mark II Commando, the finest military folding kayak in the world. The Mark II Commando package comes complete with the entire boat, the Expedition tuck under spray cover with skirts, two comfort seats, complete rudder assembly, three travel bags, the cotton packing sleeve. It comes complete with the black frame with touch codes. You've got four air tubes in the hull and the complete set of keel strips on the bottom of the boat. A 10 inch wide on the keel and two two and a half inch keel strips on the rods. Another feature on the uh, Mark II Commando is the double layer deck fabric on the bow and stern and that's specifically for loading rucksacks and whatever on the deck itself. All right this is the Mark II Commando by Long Haul and we're gonna do the complete assembly procedure. Let's get started. Okay, all of the bow pieces all have a number one touch code on them. So that touch code is on the bow piece, the bow keel, the bow deck bar, and the bow gunwales. So everything that goes to the front of the boat has a touch code on it. There are no touch codes on the stern pieces of the boat. And then all of the ribs have a touch code on them, one through seven. This is the number one rib, it's got a number one on it. First of all, simply just take the bow piece and slide it onto the bow keel. Then we have two bow rods. Bow rods are with red caps. When you put the rods on, we put the, uh, the hooks pointing up. Next, I'm going to install rib number one and the touch code always faces towards the center lock in the keel. All ribs, the braille code faces towards the center lock in the keel. So that rib is going to go in like this. Then I'm going to attach the rods to the rod holders on rib number one. I'm going to go ahead and put on two more rods, two more center rods. I'll take rib number two, two raised dots. Again, braille code faces the center of the boat. Hook in the rods to the rod holders. Next, we're going to take our bow deck bar. Again, the bow deck bar has the number one touch code on it. And we're just going to take this and we're going to slide this deck bar in. It slides in from the side. Just like that. Deck bar cap goes down over the top of it. At that point, then, we'll take and we'll hook up the deck bar fitting into the top of rib number two and lock it in place. Next, we're going to, we have two bow gunwales. They are not left and right, they're interchangeable on the bow. And you can see we have a touch code, number one. Hook it into the bow piece. I'm hooking the gunnel up to rib number one and locking it. Same thing at rib number two. Locking it. Now with the second gunwale, we're going to lock the gunwale into the fitting on the bow piece. Just like that. Attach the gunnel 
again to rib number one and to rib number two. So this now is the complete bow frame half. It's always best if you can have, when you do the assembly, I often try to build the frame up on top of the skin. And if you can, the level or the ground you have, the better off you are. If you have any uh, concave or convex ground going on, you can still do, you can still assemble the boat on ground like that, but you have to be careful. And we'll talk about that here in a minute when we get into the locks of the gunnels and the keel. You always want to slide the, the bow piece right down the center line of the deck. Anytime you meet any kind of resistance, stop, realign it, pull it back out, realign it, and push it back in. We just push that right in there like that. All right. Again, there are no touch codes on the bow, on the stern, stern pieces. Start with the stern piece, slide it onto the stern keel. Your two stern rods with hooks have blue caps. Again, hooks facing up, like that. Rib number seven, two dots and a slash. And again, the braille fitting is going to face towards the center lock in the keel. We always want to make sure that we always keep the bow and stern pieces fully engaged with the keel. Meaning, it looks like that right there. This stern piece is not slid back. Then, rib number six. Touch code facing the center. Hook on the rods to the rod holders, stern deck bar, slides in from the side, deck bar cap covers it up, lock the deck bar to rib number six. Stern gunnel, same assembly as the bow, Attach the gunnel to rib number seven, lock it. Attach the gunnel to rib number six and lock it in place. Same thing with the second stern gunnel. Attach the gunnel to rib number seven, lock it. Attach it to rib number six, lock it. That's the complete stern half. Now we're just going to simply take this and slide it into the stern. Again, don't force anything, meet resistance, stop, pull it back out push it back in. You should not be struggling with any of the procedures here in assembling this boat. Okay, now that we got the frame halves in, we are going to engage the keel lock. Basically, we're just gonna push down on that Always make sure you keep your fingers out from underneath them locks. All right, now with these gunnel locks, anytime you meet resistance in that lock, you need to stop and realign them. You want the two ends of the gunnel to meet completely and squarely. And then that gunnel will just engage nicely. And this is where if you 
find yourself not on level ground when you are putting your boat together. This is, these are the locks that you can break if this boat is sagging, if the ends are rising or the ends are dropping. This is where you're going to find, find those variances when you put these gunnels together. So anytime that gunnel doesn't go together smoothly, just make sure that you're pulling them together and squaring them up and then locking them in place. All right, once we've engaged all the locks, then we want to bring our sponson tubes, the top tubes, inflation tubes are coming up through the gunnels, just like that. Both of them, same one, same thing over here. Just like that. All right. Okay, next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the last two center rods just as long as this slider ends up in the middle of the boat. Slide them on. And now we're going to connect those rods in the middle. Simply just slide that slider right over. One little last detail, we always want the screw on the sliding sleeve to face up. You don't want that screw down in the rubber. And same thing on this side. We're ready to start putting ribs in. You can put in three, five, four, five, three, four. It doesn't matter, just as long as rib number four goes in last. That's the easiest way to do it. So here's rib number five, has a, a slash for the braille code. Now, again, that braille code is facing towards the center of the boat all right the best technique on doing this is is you want to spread these gunnels apart so how i'm going to do that is i'm going to i'm going to stick my elbow on this gunnel and i'm going to take my hand and i'm going to push out on that gunnel over here and what i'm doing is i'm spreading them gunnels so that rib just drops right in there and the the uh lock on the sides of the gunnel drop right into these uh, rectangular cutouts in the gunnels. Then I'm just going to align those fittings, engage the gunnel tongue into the lock, and lock it in place. Same thing on this side. Just like that. Then I'm going to attach the rods to the rod holder. Okay, next we're going to put in rib number three, three braille dots. All right, same thing. Sticking my elbow into the gunnel on this side, my side, and I'm pushing out with my hand on the other side. And then that rib just drops real nicely right into position. Now we're going to engage the gunnel to rib lock on rib number three. And pin it in place. Same thing on this side. And I'm going to engage the rod into the rod holder. All right, last rib to go in, number four. Same thing. Just separate the gunnels just a little bit. Drops right in place. Engage the rib gunnel lock. That one went right in. Just go ahead and lock it in place. Again, engage the rods to the rod holders. And now we've got all the ribs in. Give it a little shake just to make sure them sacks are in the right place. Okay, next piece we're going to put on is the combing. All right, on the bottom of the mass bracket, you've got a T-fitting. That T-fitting is going to drop down through the grommet in the front of the deck, front of the cockpit, and down through the rectangular slot in the deck bar fitting. So the... So the uh, the uh, combing is going to go on to the boat at a right angle. 
and it simply drops down in there. You turn it and it's locked in place. Next, we are going to attach the T-fittings on the combing to the rib locks. First, the T-fitting goes through the grommet in the deck. You lift up on the latch of the lock and lock it in place and then pin it so that lock is not going to open up. Same thing on this side. This is rib number three. I put the T-fitting into the top of the lock, shut the lock, and pinned it. Same thing on rib number four. T-fitting through the deck, through the grommet. Put it into the top of the lock, shut the lock, and pin it shut. Same thing on this side. Pin it shut. Next, we've got the two rear combing pieces. You engage these rear pieces by sliding the combing into the bracket on the end of the front combing. Again, T-fitting through the grommet, set it into the uh, top of the lock, and pin it in place. Same thing over here. It's very simple. Just slide it in there. You, they, you can't have it cockeyed here or out this way. It just simply slides right in like that. Very simple. Through the grommet, into the lock, pin it in place. You've got four screws that face towards the center of the cockpit. They hook onto the grommets in the rubber piece. This is the connection to be made right here with the fitting on the end of the combing and the fitting on rib number six. That's what it should look like right there. Just like that. Right there, now that boomerang is engaged. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to tuck the combing rubber into the combing. This little rubber flap, I'm gonna push it forward. That kind of raises up that deck right here. Makes it a little bit more water, water repellent right underneath the mass bracket. Now I'm going to go ahead and just start tucking in this rubber. All right, next we're going to put the seats in. We've got two straps in the in the bow on the bow keel and two straps on the stern keel. Those straps are permanently attached to the keel. It's going to drop the seat down in here. These these straps uh, can be put in different holes, uh, and then those straps then can come up through these different slots in the seat bottom for adjustment. So simply, we're just going to take these things, bring these buckles up. through the seat bottom, the end of the strap, through the seat bottom, and then simply just strap the seat right down onto the keel. Very secure. Then we'll take this strap here, put it down through the slot in the front of that seat, securing the front of that seat cushion to the front of the seat bottom, the wood bottom. And that seat is in place. The seats have a thermarest cushion in them. It's a self-inflating cushion. The best way for long-term storage is to leave the valve open. 
before you sit on it, you close the valve. When you sit on it, you can open that valve just a little bit and let your butt drop down in there and get a little bit, a little bit better fit. And then you can use this chair, you can take it out of the boat and sit on it. So if you're hanging out watching something, you can take your seat with you and be comfortable. Same thing with the rear. And strap it in place. Just like that. Okay, next we're going to install the complete rudder assembly. What you've got is you've got your two rudder cables, you got your blade with the head, the rudder pin, and the rudder yoke. So, first of all, we are going to take the blade and blade head, take that blade head, and just slide it right on to the rudder bracket. The yoke slides in here at the top and the pin drops down through the whole thing just like that now you want this pin you want that pin to drop all the way down you've got your rudder lift line it goes it goes through the deck fitting this is always permanently attached to your boat this should never come off. The carabiner goes, goes through the rudder pin and attaches into the hole in the blade. Next, we're going to hook the carabiner into the yoke. Same thing with this one. It's probably always a good idea to leave the cables attached to the yoke. That way you're probably not going to lose the yoke. All right. Then we are going to run the cables through the holes in the boomerang. Just like that. A couple ways to have these cables. You can just simply run it right through the cockpit and right up to the pedal. Or some people like to go up over the top of this rib. It's actually a pretty good idea. It gets the cable, it gets the cable up out of the way and puts it up here on top of the rib so you're not getting tangled up in those cables. And then whenever you're attaching these, this is an adjustment for the pedal is you're going to figure out where these cables work best for you uh, when you're attaching the cable to the pedal. Okay, just simply attach that just like that. And again, we'll just run this right over the top of that rib. You want to have the, the, the same link hooked in on both sides so it's equal. like that. All right, now we're going to raise up that blade. So that blade's up. Anytime you're moving the boat, uh, if when you're going out from the beach and coming into the beach, that blade should always be up. One, if, the, if that blade is down, and the boat ever gets going backwards, you run the risk of ripping that blade off the boat, the rudder bracket right off the boat. That will put a hole in the rear of the hull. Next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna blow up the top air sponsons half volume. And the reason we're putting, just blowing them up about half volume is, is that gives us the ability to put that spray cover on and tuck it under and there's enough tension on that deck to hold the thing in place.
but with you know if you blow them up all the way you cannot tuck that that cock or that spray cover up under between the combing and the deck so half halfway You can blow these things up by mouth or you can blow them up with a foot pump also. Anytime you use a pump, always use caution that you don't overinflate the sponsons, especially if you've got it in the dive locker and uh, you've got a compressor. Don't overinflate them with a compressor. They'll blow up. Okay, now that we've got those about half volume, we'll go ahead and put the spray cover on. First thing, we're going to put the front of the spray cover over the mass bracket. We've got a, a little piece of flat lace here on the bottom side. That piece of flat lace is going to hook underneath the front of the mass bracket. Just like that. Then we're going to come to the rear. All right, now we're going to hook up the rear of the spray cover. You've got two grommets on the corners, and then you've got two hooks that hook underneath the boomerang. First, we're going to hook up the, the grommet onto the screw. And we're going to get those hooks hooked under. Snap that on. Snap that. All right. Yeah. Along the edge of the spray cover, you have sections of rope that are that are sewn into the spray cover. Those sections of rope are what's actually tucking up between the combing and the deck. This is why you want to have about half volume in them air sponsons because right now I got the perfect amount of air in there and that's grabbing and holding that, that uh, rope nicely. Tucking in this side now. fill up the top two tubes. Fill in the bottom, bottom tubes. Alright, all four tubes are filled. Alright, last thing, we're going to put our spray skirt on. Slide on into the cockpit here. Spray cover on. That was a complete assembly process for the Long Haul Commando.
right, that was the complete assembly of the Mark II Commando. And now we're gonna start the disassembly process. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna deflate all four air sponsors. Just like that. And we're gonna take off the spray cover. Going to disconnect the rudder cables from the foot control pedals. Just gonna pull these cables out through the boomerang. Gonna take off the rear boomerang. All right, now we're going to pull the rubber out of the combing. Now I'm gonna disengage the combing from rib number five. I'm pulling the T-fitting out of the top of the lock and rib number five and pulling out the combing, rear combing pieces. Same thing on that side. Now I'm going to disengage the locks on rib number four. And disengage the locks on rib number three. Now we'll take the combing off. Now I'll get these paddles off the deck. Now I'm going to unlock the ribs, number three and number four, knocking off the rods. Off the ribs. Take out the seats. All right, now we're gonna disengage the rods in the middle of the boat. I'm going to take off the rear, the two rear center rods. I'm going to disengage the gunnels, locks, and I'm going to disengage the keel lock. Now I'm going to straddle the boat and I'm going to remove the, uh, the bow frame half from the skin. What I'm going to do here, I'm straddling the hull, I'm grabbing the rods, the keel, and the gunnels all at once. I've got everything. I've got all those frame components right here in my hands. And just slide it out. Take off the rods. Disengage the locks on the gunnels and rib and the deck bar.
take off the gunnels. Rods off. Deck bar off. And the bow piece off the keel. All right, now I'm going to take the rudder assembly off. Disconnecting the cables from the yoke. Disconnecting the lift line from the blade. Hook that onto the D-ring, the lift line onto the, the D-ring on the hull. All right, now I'm going to take out the stern half of the frame. Just like that. Knock off the rods. Disengage the locks on the deck bar and the rib. Rib number seven. Remove the gunnels. Take the deck bar off. And the rods. Slide the stern piece off. Okay, now I'm going to go over folding of the hull, which is very important for storage of the hull, for proper storage of the hull. Proper folding of the hull is very important uh, to eliminate uh, problems with the keel strips and bumpers. There's gonna, I got two different ways I'm gonna show you here how to do this. Basically, the first way, on, on both these folds, the uh, deck is always going to be facing up. I'm going to take, first way, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to fold the side of the boat in up to about in, within an inch of the keel strip, the two and a half inch keel strip. So I'm, I've got the boat folded over to just about right here on both sides. So that, that's one way to start the fold. The next way would be to fold one side over and putting the fold between the two and a half inch keel strip and the 10 inch keel strip. And this actually oftentimes is one of the better ways to do it. And then by doing it this way, that bumper, we're putting less, uh, less tension on that, on that bumper. We're never putting a fold through the bumper. There's too many layers of rubber there to fold that bumper. So the first fold on both ends of the boat always goes beyond the bumper. So it's essentially between the end of the bumper and the beginning of the hatch. You can't fold through the hatch either, the oval hatch. Same thing down here now. This first fold is going to go again beyond, beyond the end of the bumper.
and I'm in just inspecting this just to make sure that I don't have any tight folds right on the edge of those keel strips. That's what will make keel strips start to come off. So that is one way. Then again, the, the, other, the other way which we started to talk about was pulling the sides of the boat in up to within about an inch of those keel strips, those two and a half inch keel strips. And again, that first fold goes between the hatch and the end of the bumper. Again, folding it this way, then we're eliminating any bends right on the edges of those keel strips. All right, I'm gonna take all the ribs. So I've got the rib bag here. I've got the complete rudder assembly in the rib bag. Now I'm gonna put all the, all the ribs and the bow and stern piece into the rib bag. This is the uh, cotton packing sleeve for all the long parts. If you are, this is an excellent bag for long-term storage. If you're actually taking the boats out on a deployment, you may not take this bag with you. All the frame parts would just go directly into the black travel bags. That's up to you. So all the rods and two deck bars went into one sleeve. Each gunnel goes into a sleeve.
this just really helps protect all these parts and the foaming. Goes into one sleeve. Just like that. We'll go ahead and take one keel section and just roll this up. Just like that. Take the seats and put them into the laundry bag. Paddles will also fit into this bag. And there you have it, one commando, two bags.